Our guest on This is America and the World is Gayo Chiat. He's ambassador from the Kingdom of Cambodia to the United States. The ambassador formerly served as bureau chief for Cambodia's cabinet of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, first secretary of Cambodia's embassies in India and Brunei Darussalam, an advisor with the rank of Undersecretary of State with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs focused on ASEAN issues, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. We met at the Royal Embassy of Cambodia in Washington. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for sitting with me today and thank you for your hospitality. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming to uh, our embassy. So very welcome to you. Cambodia is such a wonderful country. I've had the privilege to be there, to visit some of your areas. Tell the folks who don't know about Cambodia two or three things they should know. Well, uh, if now they will talk for Cambodia, the first thing they know is Angkor Wat, which is, it represents uh, the Cambodian culture as well as the, cult the oldest cultures in Southeast Asia because it represents the capital of the lost ancient Khmer Empire 2,000 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. So Angkor Wat would be number one. Yeah. And number two, we talk about, it's not a very uh, good memory, but if you talk about the killing field, people know mm. about the killing fields that Cambodia has lost 3 million people during the civil war in 70s. The atrocity caused by the communist Khmer called Khmer Rouge, mm -hmm. because this is a French term called the Red Khmer. Uh, they are using the uh, uh, communist ideology and they, uh, they practice like a North Korea uh, uh, system and they kill 3 million people, uh, meaning uh, around 2 million were killed uh, directly by them, the rest were by the casualty of war and uh, civil war and uh, starvation. Mm. So total around 3 million. Wow. So that is the second thing. And the third thing now very Coming up, uh, we are talking about our success in uh, fighting the COVID. You may uh, hear that uh, with uh, our effort, the government's effort, uh, we, we have less casualties uh, in Southeast Asia uh, over the COVID period. Of course, we received the effect. We were locked down. Our economy was coming down the, from seven plus for the past uh, two decades, two minus two during the lockdowns. But I'm glad to uh, announce that uh, during the past five months that we opened up, our economy has uh, spring up to plus four uh, 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 in the uh, growth. Excellent. Yeah. So Ambassador, we put a map on the screen yeah. Tell me a little bit about the neighborhood, the, the bordering countries, and how Cambodia fits into those countries. Well, you see, as I informed you earlier, that uh, uh, Cambodian, uh, the, the Cambodian, the Cambodian uh, itself is the, the former uh, empire, which shrink because of the civil war and conflicts. So now we are situated between uh, our neighbors, uh, Thailand, mm -hmm. Lao uh, Republic, uh -huh. and Vietnam, the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Uh -huh. Well, we have a sea coast of uh, a few thousand kilometers but the, our sea is very shallow and, you know, it's, it's just uh, connecting to the Gulf of Siam. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, the three countries uh, together, Cambodia, Laos and Thai, we share uh, very similar cultures, very similar uh, traditions and the same religions. 
Ah. Where Vietnam have the same religion but a little bit different cultures. But mm. we stay together as, of course, it comes to time when some differences are there, but still we are neighbors and we are uh, living together in a peaceful coexistence. And does Cambodia itself have a, a, a kind of a, a foreign policy or a basis because they are living we in do, this area? We do. That's why uh, our foreign policy stick mainly on uh, protecting our integrity, our peace and uh, uh, sovereignties, as well as we stick to uh, the permanent neutralities. Uh, we, uh, we follow the five principles of Panchasila. You may have heard about Panchasila. Mm -hmm. That means okay. uh, uh, neutrality, uh, uh -huh. peaceful coexistence, non-interference in other internal affairs and non uh, uh, threaten use by force and so on. Ah. Yeah, and also we uh, exporting, uh, we, we are uh, implementing the uh, maintaining of friendship uh, and uh, peace and stability and extending more friendship outside. Ah, yeah. and that's a, that's a good policy yeah. for anyone and, to have. Yeah. Huh? And now uh, one more element that we add to our foreign policy is extending markets. So extending markets, uh -huh. meaning uh, we uh, implement the economic policies, mm -hmm. looking for new markets, uh, and then diversifying our product uh -huh. to fit the new markets. Ah, yeah. so we'll talk mm -hmm. about the economy in just a second. But, uh, but I want to go back and just say, what is the population of uh, Cambodia? Uh, we have now over 16 million people. Okay, and the yeah. capital, of course. The capital is Phnom Penh, of course. Okay. We, uh, we moved from the ancient capital of Angkor to Phnom Penh during the 13th centuries, and it stayed there in Phnom Penh. So, uh, on my visit there, which was so absolutely wonderful, uh, we're in Phnom Penh, Battenbong, yeah. if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, Battenbong. And then uh, Siem Reap, which yeah. is where Angkor Wat is, yeah. huh? Yeah. Are those the three major uh, uh, cities or areas? Well, those are the three main uh, cities, but we have two more cities that I can uh, explain it to you. Please. But let me explain. Phnom Penh is the capital as well as the commercial cities of Cambodia, whereas Battambang is the production base. You know, we call Battambang as the rice bowl of Cambodia. Uh -huh. And Siem Reap, of course, it's an ancient uh, uh, capital of the Lost Empire. Uh -huh. And it housed uh, thousands of uh, temples together. Wow. Yeah. 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 But at the same time, we are now uh, developing uh, uh, Sihanouville as the port cities. And also Kumpung Cham also start coming up as another uh, production uh, cities. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, what, what's the basis or what drives the economy? It, it used to be agriculture, huh? And then it moved to textiles, is that correct? Yeah, now uh, agriculture is still remain the, the main uh, uh, pillars. Mm -hmm. But we have two other pillars, the, the SME, the small and enterprise uh, small and medium enterprise, okay. uh, small productions and so on, uh, including the garments and sportwear and, mm -hmm. you know, and we are so number two in exporting uh, sport bicycle. Is that right? Yes. Huh. <laughs> that's then, that's uh, a good one for me, yes. And the third pillar for our economy is tourism. Yes, tourism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about tourism because I know that COVID had just all over Southeast Asia, but especially the tourism business. Um, the area or the country, is it seeking investment from outside and specifically from the United States? Yeah, we are, uh, you know, we are working uh, very hard to get more investment into this. Of course, uh, we are very welcome to the U.S. Uh, investment, and we, for the last recent uh, few months, uh, we can see the increase in U.S. Uh, company interested in uh -huh. Cambodia. We are happy that, and for the past 
five months after we opened up from COVID, the trade uh, uh, relation between the U.S. has increased to 56 percent. So uh, it's happy. And then the, we also see the more high level engagement between Cambodia and U.S. So it's, it's improving the relations. What, what is attracting businesses to be interested in Cambodia? Well, we uh, first is the cheap labors. Okay. And also the uh, natural resources, uh, including the uh, land availabilities and then the, the, the uh, stability and peace of the countries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. those are the main points that uh, sometimes uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, geopolitics, some company has moved out from some country and moved to, to other country. We find uh, more cheap laborers, more stable uh, uh, political stabilities and so on. I'm going to take a little break, uh, but I want to, on the other side of the break, uh, ask you about the fact that it is a monarchy. It is a kingdom. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about how the government is yeah, yeah, set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just say to the folks at home, we're privileged to be sitting uh, at the embassy of Cambodia, talking with the ambassador, just learning about this wonderful country. So everybody just sit tight. This is America and the world. This is America and the world is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, DC. The Republic of Uzbekistan the Sultanate of Oman, the Kingdom of Morocco, 21st Century Citizenship, the Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation, the Forerunner Foundation, the Rotondaro Family Trust, and the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy. Uh, during the break, you mentioned uh, Phnom Penh has a different name? Yes. In the past, the name is, uh, we call it Chatumok. Well, that's... It means four faces. This name after the river intersection into four. You know the Mekong and yes. then the uh, Tunde Sap rivers? And the Mekong, uh, Upper Mekong and Lower Mekong and the Basa. They come intersect in front of Phnom Penh. Uh, so it becomes oh, four faces. Yes, yeah, yes, that's four faces. Four, that's called, uh, the original name is Chato Mok. Chato is four, uh -huh. and Mok is a face. Is, uh, does uh, Phnom Penh have a translation as well? Phnom Penh, uh, it's named after the hill. Penh, uh, Phnom is a hill, okay. and Penh is a name of the lady who, who uh, built the hill because uh, it used to be uh, having flood water over the capitals. Okay. And then one day, the lady, uh, Ping, she's the, the oldest girl, uh, lady in, in town, and she picked up uh, some uh, Buddha statues uh, made of wood and floating along the river. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So she decided to build a high ground uh, like a hill. And it is there, next to the American embassy in Phnom Penh. Oh, wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. What would you, th 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 I love learning a little, these little stories and translations. What would you say is at the heart of the culture? I know there are many influences, but what, what would you say? Well, the most, the heart of the culture of Cambodian is uh, harmonies and uh, community building. Uh, we uh, practice, democracy, but uh, community democracy, because we, we base on community more than on individualists. Ah, yeah, so, so the group is more important than, yes, the, yes, than the person. Yes. You're a monarchy. It's a kingdom. Yes. Is there a king? Yes, there's a king, King uh, Norom Sehamani. Uh -huh. He's the son of uh, our father, King uh, Norodam Sehanu. Uh -huh. He passed away uh, in uh, a few years ago, nine years ago. And, and, and how is the government set up? The government was set up. Is there a parliament? Uh, yes. So? We have uh, legislatives, we have uh, executive, and then we have judici uh, judiciary powers. 
Uh -huh. So uh, every five years, uh, the parliament elections, a general election to elect the parliament. Uh -huh. And whoever party want uh, the majority will form the government. Mm -hmm. And once they form the government, they have to get the final approval from the king because the king is the head of states. Ah. But then the power, mm -hmm. the real power, li uh, lie in the hand of the head of the government. And so do you like the prime minister? Yes, the prime minister. Um, I want to ask this question with great respect because the, the history recently, some very controversial. How do people handle the pain of the... At the beginning of our conversation, you talked about two or yes, three million yes, people. Yes. How do people handle that painful period? Well, of time? it is very hard for us uh, because everyone uh, uh, affected by those uh, killings. Yeah, even even my own father was killed by the Camaroos. Oh, no. Yeah, and then 16 of my relatives were also killed uh, during the, the Camaroos time. Oh, no. But we have to live with it and then uh, of course buddhism also play a main role in the, you know healing the uh, yes. the mental trauma that we have uh, so that's why you can see uh, in cambodia you will see uh, pagoda spring up uh, many times people yeah. go to listen to the preaching uh, of the uh, monks Mm -hmm. Because uh, if I may take your time, that Buddhism is not really a religion, it's a philosophy, and it's a kind of teaching that we regarded Buddha himself as a guru. That's called, we call him Borom Guru, that means the supreme teachers. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is there in Buddhism? Because uh, I took some lessons yeah, yeah. and studied a little bit. But what would you say is in Buddhism that allows people, or that helps people deal with that painful past? You see, what, what is there in there? The main thing is they look into the cause and effects. So when you look at the effect in Buddhism, they study the cause. Cause? Yeah. Okay. And then when you have a suffering, then they will look why it is suffering. So you have to understand the cause and then you know, you start understanding the process of it, and then it made you realize what happened in the past, and you feel a little bit. Those uh, it is very difficult, but uh, we try to overcome it. Hmm, that's a heavy piece of our conversation. Yeah. But and then also Buddhism uh, teaches us how to meditate, mm -hmm. to calm our mind, to clean our uh, clear our mind and calm down. Uh -huh. yeah. It does work, doesn't it? Yeah, it works. Tourism industry. Uh, I said to you before we sat down, there was a picture in the New York Times, I think, I think it was the Times, maybe during the COVID. There was one person at Angkor Wat. Mm. One person. Um, <laughs> that was not the case when I was there, I can assure you. Go back a, a little bit more and educate us about Angkor Wat. Well, uh, Angkor Wat was built, uh, it's not in one total uh, ring of one thing, uh, built the whole Angkor Wat. Uh -huh. One ring of the kings built two or three temples. But the empire itself extends from uh, 800, uh, AD to 1013, that means 12 centuries. So there are few, few kings starting from Yayawaraman uh, the second to Yayawaraman the seventh. So they build temple differently, but the main temple of Angkor with five tower is a worship temple. It's not a place where the thing, but Angkor also represent the peaceful uh, transition of converting from Hinduism to uh -huh. Buddhism. Uh -huh. So you, when you visit Angkor, you will see different cultures present there. One is uh, Hinduism, mm -hmm. praying to God of uh, Hindu, 
and then the other is uh, Buddha about Buddhism and so on like that. Is tourism open for business now? Yeah, we, we have opened to business. Uh, the government has spent around $300 million uh, to, uh, during the lockdown to uh, rebuild the infrastructures. Okay. And uh, we also uh, subsidize to hotels and, and guest house and uh, restaurants that was closed during the yes. lockdown so to keep them survive. But now we reopen it, uh, flights start uh, moving into Siem Reap, uh, but not as much as before yet. Yeah. But uh, we can see the increase in tourism uh, uh, coming. Even the, our consult uh, uh, general outside start uh, increasing their uh, issuing their visa, tourist visas, and we know that we start uh, moving up now. So, so uh, no more quarantine? No, no more quarantines. And uh, the people there are vaccinated as well? Yes, yeah. yes. We have uh, full vaccinated. Uh, many people got five uh, doses uh, <laughs> already. I got four myself. I got four plus yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had COVID as well. Yeah. So I figured that I'm yeah. protected. Uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, and I wanted to just give you the opportunity to say, the relationship between Cambodia and the United States is, is solid, huh? Well, you see, Cambodia always- Very complex yeah. past. I know. Cambodia uh, always regard the uh, U.S. as a friend. And we are still extending. We have uh, established our diplomatic relations since 1953, since we got independence. Yes. And this building, we bought it in 1954. Whoa. Yeah. And it's still that we thank to the government of the U.S. during our civil war, they keep this for us. And then after the war, we got it back. See? The Americans. Yes. <laughs> that but, was the way we do. But uh, our uh, U.S. is still our number one trading partners. Uh -huh. We export a lot to the U.S. But because of the uh, geopolitics, some political relations are very complicated sometimes. But we are trying to overcome it through uh, using, uh, improving other uh, relations like cultural, like trade and so on. I'm, I'm glad to inform you that uh, Ford Company have just opened up their assembly line in Posat, very big one, and a training center for, for the uh, uh, technical workers uh, oh. in Siberia. And, uh, uh, Walmart also stepping in. Uh, the Walmart exporting product from Cambodia to China, not back to here. Whoa! Yeah, it's uh, it's a middleman. Wow! And uh, we also thank the government of the U.S. for returning uh, last year twenty eight artifacts, including yes. like this. You can see. Whoa! And then the, now. On the 8th of August, I'm going to receive uh, the handover from the New York attorney, uh, 30 pieces more. And some of them is, uh, some of them cost around $2 million, uh, very expensive. Good for us and yeah. good for you. We, we, we our Cambodian go, uh, people appreciate uh, the gestures of returning the uh, artifact that was stolen during the Civil War. Mm. Yeah. We are out of time, but I must ask you, as someone who has a distinguished career, now ambassador here, uh, tell me something about life. Tell me, tell me a lesson that you've learned that you want to pass along to me. What, what, what can you tell me? Well, my uh, experience is that I keep learning nonstop. And uh, like to us, like I talk to you, I learn from you, you learn from me, you see? Yeah. That's called learning. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't need to go to school, that's called learning, you see? That is for us also. And uh, to me, when I come back from the dark period of the Khmer Rouge, uh, because before going to the Khmer Rouge, I start my university college. But then the Khmer Rouge came, they drove us out. And then after three years, uh, eight months and 10 days, we came back. And then I continued my study. Luckily, I got scholarship to India. 
I came back, I joined the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I worked uh, in many places that they sent me to, different portfolio, different things. But at the same time, I still upgrading my uh, studies, uh, my qualifications. Uh, the last, my last qualification is uh, a master from the Monash, Australia. So, a man of every, you know, a jack of all trades, but I'm not expert on any, uh, on, on, on one. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for the conversation. Thank, thank you. you for your thank hospitality. You. We'd you. love to come to visit your country someday. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our YouTube channel, This Is America TV. Visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C. The Republic of Uzbekistan. The Sultanate of Oman. The Kingdom of Morocco. 21st Century Citizenship. The Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation. The Forerunner Foundation. The Rotondaro Family Trust. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy. Thank you.